Welcome back to Bilingual Health and Wealth Academy. We're going deep today mm-hmm. um, into the world of snoring, snoring with Hush Little Snorer, a comprehensive guide to silent nights. Yeah, it's a fascinating book. And the author, Dr. Xu Chenhouse, she's had such an interesting career. She started in science. Then uh-huh. she went into writing and even music composition. Really? And then she founded this company called... Coco Sheng San LTD, and it focuses on empowering digital success. So she's a multi-hyphenate. Yeah, definitely a multi-hyphenate. You never know where life will take you. Exactly. But let's unpack this book. Okay. I have to admit, when I first saw the title, I thought it was just about, you know, like, how to get your partner to stop snoring so you can sleep better. Right. But this book is framing snoring as a much bigger issue. Yeah, it is. It really is. It emphasizes that snoring is not just an annoyance. It can be a red flag for serious health problems. Like sleep apnea. Exactly. I hear about that a lot, but I don't really understand it. It's actually more common than people think sleep apnea, or specifically obstructive sleep apnea, which is often shortened to OSA. Happens when your airway gets blocked during sleep. You gasp for air or even stop breathing for these short periods. And these disruptions, even if you're not fully aware of them, can really wreak havoc on your body. Oh, wow. That's kind of scary. Yeah. So how do you know if it's just regular snoring? Right. Or something more serious like OSA? Well, uh, the book lays out some key warning signs that you should not ignore. So, of (laughs) course, loud, persistent snoring is a big one, especially if it's punctuated by pauses in breathing or those gasping sounds. But other things to watch out for are excessive daytime sleepiness, morning headaches that feel like a hangover even if you haven't had any alcohol, Wow. Difficulty concentrating. If you're experiencing any of these, it's definitely worth getting checked out by a doctor. That makes sense. But let's say it is just snoring. Right. Are there things people can try at home before they have to go to the doctor? Absolutely. The book has a whole chapter dedicated to home remedies. Oh, wow. Some of them are things you might expect, like adjusting your sleep position. So sleeping on your back actually makes snoring worse because gravity pulls your tongue and soft palate towards the back of your throat, blocking your airway. Hmm. Side sleeping is much better. So ditching back sleeping is step one. Pretty much. And there are some fun ways to make that happen. The book even suggests the tennis ball trick. What? So you sew a tennis ball into the back of your pajama top. That's hilarious. Sounds a bit quirky. Yeah. But hey, if it stops you from rolling onto your back. I love that. It's practical and hilarious. Exactly. Okay, so what other home remedies does the book suggest? Well, something as simple as staying hydrated can make a big difference. Because dehydration thickens nasal secretions, making it harder to breathe. So make sure you're drinking plenty of water throughout the day. And here's one that might surprise you. Didgeridoo playing. Wait, didgeridoo? Like the Australian instrument? Yes. Studies have shown that playing the didgeridoo strengthens the muscles in your upper airway. Wow. Which can actually reduce snoring. That's Who knew? I'm adding, learn didgeridoo to my to-do list. There you go. Anything else? Well, the book also talks about losing weight if you're overweight or obese, because excess weight around the neck can put pressure on your airway. And it goes without saying that you should avoid alcohol and sedatives before bed. They relax your throat muscles, which can make snoring worse. So it's all about making those lifestyle changes. Yeah. But what if home remedies aren't working? Right. What are the medical options? Well, the book talks about a range of treatments, starting with the most well-known one, CPAP machines. I've heard of those, but they sound kind of intimidating. I get it. Basically, it's a mask that you wear while you sleep, and it delivers this continuous stream of air to keep your airway open. Mm-hmm. So think of it like a gentle breeze keeping a flimsy tent flap open. The CPAP ensures your airway stays open so you can breathe freely all night. It might sound like a lot... But most people adjust to it pretty well, Mm. and the benefits are significant. Okay. There are also other options, like oral appliances. They're kind of like mouth guards that reposition your jaw and tongue to keep your airway open. And in some cases, surgery might be recommended to widen the airway. So there's a whole spectrum of solutions. Exactly. Depending on how severe the snoring is. Yeah, and one of the things I really appreciate about this book is Dr. Howe doesn't just throw all these different solutions at you. She actually lays out a seven-step plan to stop snoring. Oh, cool. It starts with understanding the root cause of your snoring, which might be different for everyone. Right. And then it guides you through experimenting with different remedies and techniques until you find what works best for you. I like that. It takes the guesswork out of it. Exactly. So the book also talks about the long-term health benefits of quitting snoring. 
Right. And I know we talked about sleep apnea. Yeah. But what other risks are we talking about here? Well, remember how we talked about those repeated drops in oxygen during sleep? Yes. That puts a lot of strain on your cardiovascular system. Yeah. Over time, that can lead to hypertension or high blood pressure. And high blood pressure is a major risk factor for heart disease, right? It is. And that's not all. OSA can also mess with your heart rhythm, causing something called cardiac arrhythmias. And it can even contribute to inflammation and atherosclerosis, which is when plaque builds up in your arteries, increasing your risk of heart attacks and strokes. Wow. I had no idea snoring could be linked to so many heart problems. It's a bit of a wake-up call. Yeah. And the scary thing is, many people don't even realize they have OSA until they experience a major health event. So early diagnosis and treatment are so important. That makes sense. So even if you don't have OSA, chronic snoring can still have negative health effects. That's right. Yeah. For example, the book talks about the connection between snoring and diabetes. Oh, really? You might be thinking, wait, what does snoring have to do with blood sugar? Right. But here's the thing. When you don't sleep well, your body produces more of the stress hormone cortisol. Uh Uh-huh. And high cortisol levels can actually make your cells less sensitive to insulin, which is the hormone that helps your body use glucose for energy. So OSA disrupts your sleep, which messes up your hormone balance. Right. And that leads to insulin resistance. Exactly. Which is a key factor in type 2 diabetes. It's like a domino effect. And the more we learn about sleep, the more we realize how interconnected it is with every aspect of our health. This is starting to make me a little paranoid about getting enough sleep. I know, right? What about our brains? Does snoring affect cognitive function? It absolutely can. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Your brain needs a constant supply of oxygen to function properly. When you have OSA, those repeated drops in oxygen deprive your brain of what it needs. Yeah. This can lead to problems with memory, attention, decision-making, All those essential cognitive functions. It's like trying to run your computer on low battery power. Exactly. Everything slows down and you can't think clearly. Perfect analogy. And the book mentions that chronic OSA can even lead to structural changes in the brain, which can contribute to cognitive decline over time. Wow. Okay. I'm officially convinced I'm going to start prioritizing my sleep. It's so important. Like it's a matter of life or death. It is. Which apparently it kind of is. So beyond the health risks... Snoring can also put a strain on relationships. Right, it definitely can. The book talks about how partners of people who snore often suffer from sleep deprivation themselves. Right. Leading to fatigue, irritability, even resentment. It can create a lot of tension and distance in a relationship. Yeah, it's like a silent wedge driving couples apart. That's a great way to put it. And it's not just romantic relationships that are affected. Think about roommates, family members... Even traveling companions. So addressing snoring isn't just about taking care of yourself. It's also about the people around you. Exactly. It's a gesture of love and respect. And the good news is the book offers some really helpful advice for couples who are trying to navigate snoring together. It emphasizes open communication, empathy, and a willingness to work together to find solutions. Communication is key. Absolutely. But what about the snorers themselves? I imagine it can take a toll on their self-esteem and mental health, too. You're absolutely right. The book actually dedicates a whole section to the psychological effects of snoring. Many people who snore feel embarrassed and ashamed. They might avoid social situations where they might have to share a room with someone. It can really impact their confidence and quality of life. It's like a vicious cycle. You snore, so you're embarrassed and avoid social situations, which leads to stress and anxiety, which in turn can make your snoring worse. Exactly. And that's why addressing snoring is so important. It's not just about silencing the night. It's about breaking free from that cycle and reclaiming your health, your relationships, and your overall well-being. This deep dive is really eye-opening. I thought snoring was just a minor annoyance. Right. But it's clear that it can have some significant consequences. It's definitely something we shouldn't take lightly, but the good news is there are things we can do to address it. So what are some of Dr. Howe's recommendations for breaking free from the snoring cycle and creating a more peaceful, healthy life? Well, the book emphasizes a multi-pronged approach. So if you've been diagnosed with OSA, sticking with your prescribed treatment is crucial, whether that's using a CPAP machine consistently, wearing your oral appliance every night, or diligently following any lifestyle modifications your doctor has recommended. So finding what works for you and sticking to it. Exactly. But even beyond specific treatments, the book really hammers home the importance of cultivating a healthy lifestyle in general. Right. All the things we know we should be doing, but sometimes let's slide. Yeah. Like eating a balanced diet. Yeah. Getting regular exercise. Yeah. Managing stress. 
and of course, avoiding smoking. It's funny how those healthy habits we hear about all the time somehow become even more important when you're talking about something as specific as snoring. It's all connected. Yeah. And then there's sleep hygiene, making sure you have a regular sleep schedule, creating a relaxing bedtime routine, and turning your bedroom into a sleep sanctuary. Uh huh. That means keeping it cool, dark and quiet. Yeah. And definitely ditch the screens at least an hour before bed. Okay. I'm guilty of that one. I love scrolling through my phone in bed. But I guess if it's the difference between a peaceful night's sleep and potentially increasing my risk of heart disease or diabetes, it's time to break that habit. It's worth it. And here's something I found really interesting. The book talks about the link between stress and snoring. Oh, really? Apparently, when we're stressed, our muscles tense up, including the muscles in our throat and neck, which can make snoring worse. You know, I've always wondered about that because they clench my jaw when I'm stressed. Is there actually a connection there? You're onto something. It's not as you. The book suggests incorporating relaxation techniques into your daily routine. Okay. Things like deep breathing exercises, meditation, or even just taking a few minutes to stretch and unwind before bed. Those are all good stress busters in general. I'm a big fan of yoga and meditation myself. But what if you've tried all those things? Lifestyle changes, home remedies, maybe even medical treatments, and you're still snoring. Well, the book emphasizes that it's a journey, not a destination. There might be setbacks along the way, and that's okay. The key is to stay vigilant, monitor your sleep quality. And if you notice snoring creeping back in, don't hesitate to consult your doctor. Right. There might be something else going on that needs to be addressed. So being proactive and advocating for your own health. Exactly. And remember, it's not just about you. Addressing snoring is a gift you give to yourself and the people you share your life with, your partner, your family, your roommates. Everyone benefits from a peaceful night's sleep. It's amazing how much we've learned about snoring from just one book. It seems like a simple problem, but Dr. Howe revealed all these intricate connections to our health, our relationships, even our mindset. It really highlights how important it is to look beyond the surface. Snoring is often dismissed as a joke or just a minor annoyance, but it can be a sign of something much bigger. And it's empowering to know that we can make changes and improve our sleep and our overall well-being. Absolutely. Hmm. And for our listeners who are ready to take that next step and dive even deeper into the world of silent nights and empowered living, we highly recommend checking out kokoshungsan.net. It's a treasure trove of resources, including more books, podcasts, and information about Dr. Howe's company, Coco Shungsan LTD, which focuses on empowering digital success. It's inspiring to see someone like Dr. Howe who has so many different passions and uses them to make a positive impact on the world. Yeah, it's a reminder that we all have the potential to do amazing things, even if it starts with something as simple as quieting our snores. Well said. This has been an incredible journey into the world of silent nights. And for our listeners, what stood out to you the most? What one thing will you try tonight for a quieter, more restful night's sleep? Sweet dreams, everyone.